This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In this video, we're going to take a look at the SQL commands that create sequences and triggers and talk a little more about the role of sequences and triggers in our database. I've discussed that in some of the earlier videos, specifically in the database videos that went with Apex 3. So I'm in Apex and I'm logged in as Mark. And I want to look at the original script that created the tables because it also created sequences and triggers. If I go to the SQL scripts for Mark, I see the insert scripts that we ran in the previous video. The original script that created the tables is not listed here because I was logged in as Mina Mendez when I ran the, that script. So I'm going to log out. And I'm going to log back in as Mina Mendez. I'll pause the video. So now I'm logged in as Mina. And I'm going to go to SQL Workshop, SQL Scripts. And I see the script that created the, that created the tables. In order to see the code, I'm going to go to Edit. I'm going to enlarge the display a little bit. And I'm going to scroll down to Persons. Here's the SQL command to create the columns in a new table called persons. Here's the command for creating the sequence. Create sequence, then you have to give it a name. And I've used the name of the primary key field, underscore SEQ. Then I can give it a starting value. If you don't give a starting value, the sequence will start with 1. I'm setting the starting value at 90,000. I've set up the sequences for many of the tables so that they start with a different value, simply because when we look at the data, either in the tables directly or through reports, I want the numbers to look a little different. Once you get comfortable with the use of sequences and what primary key values do for us, it won't be terribly confusing to see several similar values in separate columns. But I want it to be visually more distinct as we look at the data. But it's also something that we often want to do when we're going to have a sequence generate numbers. Instead of starting at 1, we want it to be in a 10,000 series, or we want it to be in a 50,000 series. Then, right below that, we have a create or replace trigger code. This is create or replace a trigger. That's a little subset of SQL code, PL SQL code, actually. The programming language, structured query language, that's the programming code that comes in Oracle. So we're going to create or replace a trigger, and the name of it is BI for before insert underscore persons. So before insert of a row into persons, for each row, this code right here will check to see if the purse ID is null. If it is null, then it will go over and select the next value from the sequence. That's the name of the sequence. It will go into the new record in the primary key field called purse underscore ID. You can kind of ignore the from dual. It's there simply for SQL syntax purposes, the way the command has to be structured. So the begin and the if and the end if are part of the PLSQL code. Embedded in that is a standard SQL statement, this right here. In addition, this code executes, which takes the current system date of the computer that maintains the database and puts that date into a field called date created. So we'll have built into each record a timestamp of when that record was inserted. If I look at one more, we can see almost identical coding, except that we have a different 
name for the sequence, a different starting value, which is not necessary, but makes it a little easier when you're looking at the data and you're not used to working with sequences. Create or replace trigger before insert to employees. Then we're going to, if the employee ID is null, then we're going to go to the sequence, get the next value, put it into the primary key field of that new record. That's what the new's for. And once we've done that, insert the current date into the date created field. If I come over to Object Browser and I look at triggers, I see the triggers and I see the sequences. Those code statements in the script actually create objects in the database. Just like the tables are objects, so are the triggers. That coding is stored in the database. In addition to the tables, we've created database objects that are known as sequ sequences that generate unique values for primary key fields and triggers, which are programming code. Remember the naming conventions for related videos in this tutorial series. The Apex videos are 00 through 12, 14, whatever, however many videos there are. If there's a related database video for a specific video, let's say I've at Apex 02, then that name is going to be, for the database, is going to be Apex02DB and then the number of that video series. Because for this one Apex video, I might end up having two or even three videos about the database concepts. There'll be some Apex videos that have none of these, but this is how you can access the database videos specific to that Apex video. And the same thing would go if I have Apex, let's say, 03. I have something specific I want to cover in SQL. That would be SQL and 01 through SQL 03. So I would have 1, 2, 3. All of these relating to the Apex video 03. Hopefully that'll help.